Hey guys, Poor here with another preseason power rankings video for summer 2023, this time for LEC. The region starts on the 17th, so let's get into it. While this region featured many spicy roster changes, the top 6 teams all decided to keep their rosters together. In 10th, I've got XL. They made two roster changes, the first of which being swapping VTO for Abadage. This isn't too much of a surprise, as Abe did sign with XL as the sub mid laner during Spring Split, and it was expected this would occur. The other change included dropping Xerxe and signing Peach, an LCK CL jungler who played for DRX. The roster performed very well, although it was filled with other talents such as Pleta, Clear, and June, meaning it's not 100% certain if Peach was the dominant force that will lead to a strong showing in LEC. However, LCK CL has a great track record for strong performing imports, so take that as you will. Overall though, I don't think this new XL roster will be good enough to change their trajectory. Peach is likely an upgrade, but I personally view Abe as a downgrade. The XL roster also seems to have internal issues that I don't know if can be fixed right away. I don't expect this team to make playoffs with the little time they have in the new format. In 9th, I've got Heretics. They also made two roster changes, swapping Ruby for Vitio, which I view as an upgrade, and Jack Spectra for Flakid, which I actually also view as a positive. I think Jack has a lot of potential as an ADC, but Yankos and Flakid have experience playing together, and Flakid has also been tearing up Academy. As for Vitio, it's true that he underperformed in 2023 so far, but that doesn't change how strong he was in 21 and 22. I also view Yankos in high regard, making for three strong members. My main knock against this team is that Evie had a hard time transitioning into the LEC, and Mirsa has not impressed me quite yet, so I don't think this team has the firepower to make groups. The LEC actually has a lot of very solid rosters to this split, meaning room for weak slots is less and less tolerable in order to place well in this region. Displaying that perfectly is my 8th place roster, which is Koi. They finished 6th in spring, but made one roster change, swapping Trimby for Advien, which I view as a downgrade. Trimby had a weak 2023 so far, but is still a massive talent who is willing to be flexible, and I think losing that asset will mean the trajectory of the team will likely go down. While Koi has a talented core, they failed to break through in spring, so they have to prove to me they can make this change to roster work. In 7th is Fnatic, who I think are the biggest winners of this offseason. They swapped their bot lane of Reckless Advien for Noah Trimby, which should be a powerhouse duo right out of the gate. I also thought Oscar Rinnan was playing quite well in the latter half of spring despite his horrible start, and I can definitely see the potential in him. This Fnatic roster looks very strong on paper, now it's more about whether or not they can actually live up to their expectations for the first time this year. In 6th I have Astralis, and as I mentioned before, every roster from here on out is keeping their entire 5 bad lineup. Astralis had a huge resurgence in spring and looked strong ever since the acquisition of Leader, but it seemed like people figured out the team by the end of the split. I still think they have a solid core though, with a super consistent bot duo and a topside who are volatile but have a high ceiling. In 5th I've got SK. This roster is solid across the board for me, with Exekick and Doss having a very impressive showing. I had question marks about Sardis coming into Winter Split, but he's been performing pretty well. As for Markun and Irrelevant, I have extremely high hopes for both of these players, with Irrelevant being my pick for the most underrated player in the entirety of the LEC. This guy almost always plays well and never seems to get recognition for it. What makes me knock this team down to 5th though is their lackluster ending to Spring Split, so we'll have to see whether we get Spring SK or Winter SK. In 4th, I have the reigning Spring LEC champions, Mad Lions. While they did win the split, I don't think I'm alone in being skeptical of this roster. They had a fairly underwhelming showing at MSI, getting swept by T1 and G2 to complete the TSM 06 international performance. This does have an asterisk on it though, as Game 1 against T1 was extremely close, showcasing just how strong Mad's early games can be. Their new top laner Chasey had an argument for best performing top in LEC, Alyoya has been consistently a top 3 jungler in LEC for years now, and the volatile bot lane that everyone thought would be a crash and burn coin flip has actually been one of the more consistent bot lanes in the entire league. In third, I've got BDS. Many people think that BDS is similar to Astralis in the sense that their playstyle was discovered and exploited towards the back half of spring. However, I think the potential of each individual player on BDS is high enough that I believe they'll figure it out again. Lebrov is considered the best solo queue support in the region, Crownshot is my favorite ADC in the league and has been since his showing on Vitality, Sheo has shown the ability to 1v9 games if needed, Adam can be a bit coin flip who has the x-factor to win you games out of nowhere, and while Nuke was disappointing in the past splits, Spring was definitely the best split he's ever had. I remain excited for this roster and hope they can make it to Worlds. In second, I've got Vitality. They get another split with Upset who is undoubtedly the best western ADC currently, and they have veterans like Perks or Kaiser who can survive and perform well in pretty much any meta. Photon performed above expectations despite being from LCK CL, and while many were disappointed with Bo, he showed flashes of his LPL dominance here and there. If the stars align for this roster, they are easily the best team in the West. More realistically though, we're probably looking at anywhere within the top 4 for this team. Finally in first, I've got G2, even though they finished 4th in spring. At the end of the day, they were easily the strongest looking Western team at MSI, taking games off of both Gen.G and BLG. Yike was especially stepping up to prove he can play carries at the highest level, and BB also showed his team fighting translated to the highest level as well, meaning this team has what it takes to potentially contest the East come Worlds. 
Basically, MSI took all of my doubts about this team and dissipated them one by one. The only question mark still surrounding this team for me is whether Caps can still tap into his prior form or if he's on the decline. With that, that's every major region done. I stream on Twitch sometimes and also have a Discord server, links to both will be in the description. I also have a Kofi page and any tips are highly appreciated. Thanks for watching, bye!